Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I appreciate you being here, and especially for such a, a big chunk of time. Um, as uh, Amy had said earlier, uh, we've been involved with Beacon for some time now, and we, we've really benefited our rural clinics from that association. And one of the things that happened um, before this training got set up, as Amy said, is that there was a, a survey, a needs assessment done, to sort of ask educators what they would like to be trained on, what they would like to know about. And um, two of the top uh, topics that were selected that we're going to be covering today surprised and impressed me, and they were uh, this issue of empathy for students with behavioral health disorders and also helping students transition back into school following hospitalization, psychiatric hospitalizations. And those are two impressive topics to me as a mental health provider because they're not self-serving topics. I mean, it, these are topics that are all about the student and making life easier for the student and not making life easier for ourselves as educators. So I was, I was very impressed by that. When they, um, when they sent me the flyer, uh, though, and uh, I saw how long I was presenting today. I have to say, I, I was taken slightly aback. Um, it's more common uh, when dealing with educational staff for a, a training to be a couple of hours long, right? You guys are busy people, you got a lot going on. So I was thinking I was gonna be needing to filibuster or maybe read from the DSM for portions to fill the time. But as I sat down and I started to prepare um, this talk, what I realized is that fortunately or unfortunately, there's plenty to talk about on this issue, right? Um, behavioral health issues directly impact uh, us as educators and in a variety of ways. And so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our goals for today. Um, the goals that we kind of have set are to identify and discuss common behavioral health challenges in students, to lay the groundwork for this talk we're gonna be having on empathy issues and reintegration issues. We want to increase the understanding of and empathy for these challenges. And there's a variety of different ways that, um, that I've said about trying to do that. How is the volume, by the way? It's fluctuating just a bit. We good? Um, when I think about empathy and I think about what increases empathy or what teaches empathy, a, a, a variety of things come to mind. One thing is information. The more we know about someone else's experience, I think that lays the groundwork for greater empathy. Um, also, perspective taking, being able to step into that person's shoes and be able to see some of what they're experiencing. So throughout this presentation, I've tried to kind of weave these in. So there'll be informational components. Um, there will also be a variety of clips of people who are actually dealing with or have dealt with these sorts of challenges so that we can attempt to step into their shoes a little bit. And then we will do some um, kind of pers perspective taking exercises um, later on in the presentation, but I promise no role plays will be done today, so. Um, I also want to uh, have some time to provide some specific strategies. The topics that you folks uh, asked for, again, were not self-serving topics, but I also want to try to provide some information that's going to be useful. Is the remote not working? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, okay. <laughs> um, that's gonna be useful, some strategies, some tools that might be beneficial. Um, and so these are the designated goals, but my own personal goals, uh, I also have a few of those. Um, I want to take frequent breaks. Um, I want this to be more of a discussion than a lecture, okay? I want this to be something as interactive as possible. Um, if it's so totally ingrained in you that you must raise your hand, please feel free to, but don't feel bound by that. Speak up, ask a question, make a comment, share an experience. I think we can gain the most from this if we, if we have it as a discussion instead. Um, we will kind of announce breaks throughout because I don't feel like any human being should have to sit for more than about 45 minutes at a time. Um, but if there is not a break, and you need to get up and walk around, I'm going to just accept. Um, I'm just gonna kind of treat you all as if you're a bit ADHD today. So get up, move around. If you need to go answer a call, if you need a break, if you need a drink, just please feel free, as informal as possible. Today, um, I wanna to take some time to do some introductions. Um, and it's a small enough group, I think we can do that. And I think it will also be helpful to me because it will help me tailor a little bit as we go to make the presentation the most useful to the people who are here attending. Um, I want to talk about why behavioral health issues are important for us as educators, and then talk about some of the most common 
behavioral health issues experienced by students. So in the course of that, we're gonna be talking some about symptoms. We're gonna be talking, I'm not gonna go through DSM uh, criteria specifically, but more talking about how they present the symptoms that we see in, in those youth in our environment, how those symptoms impact young people educationally. Again, that perspective taking, that empathy piece, what it's like to have those disorders, what kind of care students need and maybe how school staff can be helpful with those particular behavioral health challenges. And then that piece of helping students reintegrate after behavioral health hospitalization. Um, and maybe even just to start with, I could ask, how many of you here have specific training in mental health or behavioral health topics, issues? Okay, so a few of you do. Um, those of you who don't have specific training, um, how many would consider your knowledge about those issues to be significant, pretty high? Okay. I'm not sure what you mean by training. Well, school counselors or a special education teachers oh. who have received specific uh, diagnostic training, that sort of thing. Okay. 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 All right, and then I have some additional topics that I sort of brought along. Um, because they relate, um, and we can decide whether we want to include them or not. And of course, bullying. And I can hear the internal size and the eye rolling from here, because this is a topic that we've all been a little bit overexposed to. But I will argue that as long as we continue to put young people who are impulsive and hormonal and whose frontal lobes are not fully developed, and I am talking about the students here, as long as we continue to put those, people together in small rooms, we're gonna have bullying issues. As much as we've done about it and as much as we continue to do about it, one of the things that you'll notice as we listen to these videos and we listen to these young people talk about depression, about anxiety, about suicide, is that this keeps coming up. This keeps coming up as a factor. So that tells me it needs to be something that we deal with on an ongoing basis. So I have a presentation that I've put together specifically targeted towards us as an educational community. And if we have time and if we have some interest, we'll get into that. Um, I think another one that comes up quite a bit is this issue of self-injury. Um, as educators, how many of you would have had experiences with students who self-injure? Okay. So um, as we go along, I'm gonna ask for your feedback in terms of which of those uh, talks to delve into more and less. And we just kind of make this a fluid thing as we go. Does that sound okay? Awesome. 